Hi everyone, this is Ashish and uh, welcome back to Azure Bicep training series. Uh, today we are going to discuss about functions and operators in Azure Bicep. Uh, myself Ashish Raj, I am co-founder of Azure Easy community and I am working as a cloud and DevOps architect. I am Microsoft certified trainer. Uh, let's go back to the training. So, so far we have discussed this course outline, uh, you know, in different sessions we have covered different part of the, uh, you know, infrastructure as code and then we discussed uh, various aspect of Azure Bicep. So, we, when we started, we started with the, uh, what is infrastructure as code, what are the different toolings available, what is the benefit and how this particular ecosystem fits into the uh, infrastructure deployment uh, and what are the benefits or, or the different things that you should consider when you are adopting this practice in your DevOps, uh, you know, adoption. Uh, then we discussed about Azure Bicep. So what exactly Azure Bicep is, how, you know, how beneficial it is and what are the different alternatives we have and when to choose Azure Bicep and when not to choose Azure Bicep. And then we discussed about tooling and setup, you know, what are the different tools you need, what are the different setup of Visual Studio extensions that you will need, uh, and so on and so forth, like, you know, setting up AG CLI and other things that you will need uh, when you start to work with Azure Bicep. And then next thing that we discuss, you know, uh, discussed is that the basic structure of Bicep file. So, you know, what are the different components of a Bicep file, how the resources are designed, how the parameters are defined, and, you know, so that you, you when you look at a Bicep file, you can at least make sense out of it, like, you know, what's happening here. Uh, maybe not really writing the Bicep file, but at least trying to understand how this works. And then we discussed about data types, and then we discussed about parameters, variables, and outputs. Uh, in the next session, we discussed about loops and conditions. Uh, you know, how to use loops to deploy resources in iterative way and, and things like that. And similarly, we discussed about uh, building an Azure Bicep module. So when we talk about uh, infrastructure as code, we talk about reusability and then how the, the reusability factor comes into picture when you are doing uh, deployment using Azure Bicep. So how do you build a module, how you can reuse the module to to deploy the similar resources in Azure without writing the same code again and again. Uh, and then now today we are going to discuss about functions and operators. So there are many functions, uh, you know, many functions available in, in, in Azure Bicep and similarly like any other uh, programming language, we have operators. Uh, so how do you use them? How, you know, what are those basic or the, the most fundamentals functions that you must know when you are working with Azure Bicep. So let's, uh, these are the few functions that you you will definitely need to know. And the, uh, having said that, it's not just these functions. You might have to know a bit more than that. And uh, let me open that for you. So, yeah. So if you go to the bicep functions uh, documentation, you will see that you have so many functions available here. But, and and, and the, all these functions are important. Uh, it's not that we, we just uh, need to know those uh, selected few, but when you start uh, start to work with Azure Bicep, and if you know, if you do not know anything about uh, different functions, then, uh, to begin with, you must at least focus on some of them so that you can start to work on them. And then when, as and when you need other functions, you can come to these uh, this documentation and you can go through the documentation and you can definitely uh, use them. Uh, the beauty of a declarative uh, uh, language uh, such as Bicep or Terraform is that it is plain English. So if you, you know, you, you don't really have to uh, kind of uh, know a lot of programming uh, concepts to, to make use of these functions or to make use of these component of Bicep. But yes, uh, to begin with, you at least should know which one of them you definitely should understand first and then you can proceed for others. So that's what the objective of this session is. So we will go through the basic one first and then possibly as and when you need you will be able to navigate through this documentation yourself or you can of course find other document or 
uh, in in upcoming sessions we might cover other other functions as and when the requirement comes in during demos so in terms of scope functions you have like three uh, scope functions resource group subscription and tenant and these scope functions are basically used for defining the scope of the deployment so if you know in azure you can deploy resources on the resource group level uh, you can deploy resources on just uh, you can deploy resources on the subscription level you can deploy resources on the tenant level so when when you are defining uh, your azure bicep file and when you are deploying resources such as policies that are uh, deployed on the subscription level or on the tenant level you will need to know these functions and how do we use these scope functions we will just get to know actually we have already used this uh, one of these uh, but again we will we will just have a look on these uh, how to use them similarly in terms of resource functions we have so many resource functions uh, but one of the most common one that you must know is resource id function which returns back the resource id of the resource that you need to know so many times when you deploy resources and when you want to integrate resources with each other you need to know the resource id of another resource so that you can connect them together uh, that is where your source ID is useful. Uh, similarly, you have like unique string. We have again used this function a lot, but unique string is something that will uh, kind of give you a unique uh, string value that you can use for different use cases. Like, um, for example, you want to generate a, a storage account name uh, because it has to be unique. Uh, this is the function uh, that will give you that. And uh, of course, you can you can kind of define the level of uniqueness whether within resource group or within the subscription and so and so forth so let's go back and uh, start to practice so let me just open the video studio and in video studio let me do this yeah and uh, okay looks like yeah, this will be better yep so okay so we have like day 9 and in the j9 we have like module and then we have like main bicep which is blank now in this uh let's do one thing we will create a similar module file like a storage account We have done a similar thing in the past. We are, ex, you know, kind of creating this example using storage account, which is uh, kind of a very simple and uh, very simplified resource, actually. So if we, we we can easily demonstrate the the bicep functionality with this resource uh, without getting into too much complex, uh, you know, infrastructure as code. Uh, okay, so let me just copy this thing from here so that we can actually see how things are working okay so here as you can see we have a resource uh, i mean we have a module which is uh, a storage account uh, which is going to create a storage account for us and uh, using this so there are two variables uh, one you know parameter which is storage account name and rest of the things uh, like storage account name resource group location and so and so forth so this will create a uh, storage account uh, thing and here if you we have already gone through it so we'll just copy this here I'll paste it here so okay so if we want to use this storage account module we first have to provide a storage account name which has to be a unique name so I have just created a kind of a unique name using this uh, unique string function where I'm saying, you know, it has to be unique within subscription ID that I have given. So this way it will create a storage account unique. I mean, it will create a unique string and then it will concat with ADP one. So then it will become a very unique string for us. And this is the unique string. Now first, and, and to deploy a module, we have already covered in the previous step that we need to use this and uh, maybe my storage account 
and then I will say in the module folder I have a storage account bicep and then I say uh, ADP storage account parameter is storage account which is storage account name from here now this is the the use of a storage account but if I want to want uh, to define the target scope and it ha it can be now this target scope uh, as you can see the target scope can be management group can be resource group can be subscription or can be tenant so as i discuss as we discussed uh, deployment can happen either on the subscription level or on the resource group level or on the management group level or on the tenant level and it all depends upon what kind of resources you are deploying so for example when you are deploying resources like policies azure policies and so, things like that management group is something that you may have to evaluate that if you want to de deploy those policies on the management group level similarly if you are deploying resources you know that you need to deploy the resources on the resource group level so it has to go to the resource group uh, level uh, similarly when we deploy you know things on the subscription level we need to select the subscription and same way chain it so it all depends on what kind of resources you are deploying and uh, you you need to select that uh, target scope accordingly so this is the target scope now we will select subscription for, for now now when we select subscription as you can see we have an error and the error says that we have a scope subscription is not valid for module uh, so when we are deploying this this is going to deploy this module and this module is deploying let's go to the definition this module is deploying a storage account which is a resource now resources can be deployed on the resource group level it cannot be deployed on the subscription level however we are saying you know you want to deploy on the subscription level so for that reason what we have to do is we have to create a resource group first And resource group, and then I will select a uh, API, maybe maybe this, and then should be name. I'll say ADP bicep demo RG. yeah and then you have to give the location and location I'll give rest Europe Now, this is the resource group I am going to create and similarly, I have to define the scope now and then if I say my RG, which is a resource group, it is fine now. So, this is the way you use this scope. Scope is something that you need to define for different levels like resource group, subscriptions or, you know, tenant or management group. So, for, for our case, we are defining this scope to be resource group. And similarly, what you can do is you can use this, uh, for example, this uh, resource group uh, function to get different values of resource groups. So for example, I'll go here and here the location is resource group dot location. So I can use the source group dot location. So resource group is the function that we have already discussed one of the function that and that returns different values of resource group and here I can see location is one thing but if I do this then you will get different types of properties name you know and different things so here we just need to know the location of the resource group so this is the way you can use this resource group function to get the uh, you know uh, the storage account uh, I mean to get the values out of it and you can deploy this save it and now uh, when you deploy uh, 
resource group. I mean, when you use these functions, uh, like uh, you can use uh, the same way you can use subscriptions, you can use uh, uh, subscription functions for getting different values. So for example, let's go ahead and create another module uh, keyword. And the key vault, what I would say is resource mic or maybe KV key vault. And I'll say this one. Let me take it down. And here, name, maybe KV name, location, I'll say this was good location, properties, okay. So similarly, uh, we can do this, yeah, and let's format this. Format document. Yeah. Now we have this KV name, which is which is supposed to be parameter. So I will say param KV name. Now you have this KV name parameter and you can see that we have a tenant dot id. So this is the another function that we discussed about tenant uh, this discussed about previously. So another function that we can use as tenant dot tenant id. Uh, so you need some resources or sometime you need to have the tenant ID where you're deploying and this is the way you can fetch the tenant ID other than you know using it as a scope function to to define the scope of the uh, the deployment so uh, if we go to here and uh, this is the thing and now let's do one more thing uh, let's go to the PowerPoint so we have already discussed uh, let me Okay. Yep. Just in a moment. Yep. So yeah. So we have discussed about. Uh, let me go back. Yeah. So we just uh, looked into the resource group function, subscription function, tenant function. Uh, resource ID function is another function that you can use in the similar way uh, unique string we have already looked into it uh, for defining the the unique string of the of the resource uh, storage account name now similarly what you can do is uh, next thing is that you have comparison operator uh, you have logical operator and you have accessors so let's go back to the VS code let's have a look on the uh, comparison operator so uh, we have a storage account a module which deploys a storage account with the sku standard lrs and uh, we want to define this standard lrs i mean uh, the sku to be different so if we go here sku then you have oops, uh then in that case you have uh, different kind of skus you have premium lrs you have a standard lrs you have standard grs uh you have different skus and let me yeah zoom it a bit so you have these different uh skus and you want to kind of uh, parameterize it based on some conditions for example 
when the deployment is happening to production you want to have premium lrs but when it, the deployment is happening to any other environment other than production you want to use a standard lrs because premium lrs is a bit more costly standard lrs is not that costly but at the same time premium lrs gives you some premium features uh, which are not available in this standard lrs that is needed for the production use cases so for that reason what we will do is we will create a parameter and we'll say that environment name and we'll say you know environment name and this can be allowed values can be you know uh Let's we'll say broad, maybe, yeah, production, staging, development. So there can be three environment that you will have. And what we want to define is we don't want to use a standard LRS for all the environment. We want to use standard LRS only for other, uh, other than production. So what we can do here is that So we can define the SQ name here like a variable or we can directly define there. But what we'll do is we'll say environment name. So what we are saying is uh, just moment. Yeah. So if you know we are using ternary ternary operator to define in, if environment name is production then do a standard lrs uh, sorry this has to be premium what are the different options that you have just yeah so premium lrs and i will just copy it here just to make sure we are not doing any typo and then you know if it is not production if it is any other environment then it has to be a standard lrs so that way we are, you know, defining the SKU and here I will say SKU name. Now this could be done here itself. So instead of control C, yeah. And then we can get rid of this variable itself. So it is all up to you how, you know, if you think this particular value is used in multiple places, uh, so suppose you have like three storage accounts being de being deployed by using this particular module and you have the same logic for all the all those storage accounts. then maybe having a variable makes more sense because you don't have to duplicate this this part of code again and again but again if it is just one storage account then it doesn't make sense to have a variable specifically for this line of code however you can do this way so this this is you know this is the uh, kind of a way to use the uh, uh, what you call uh, comparison operator. So this is the equal comparison operator. This is a string. So we are using equal comparison operator, but you have all other uh, operators like greater than equal to, more than equals to, not equals to. These are all you know available, and you can easily find them. Let me go back and uh, functions you have let me just yep operators and if you go to comparison operator you will find all these different operators available to you now it all depends on what kind of uh, uh, you know logic that you want to uh, that you need uh, at the moment uh, right now for us string operate uh, for us string is there and for that equal operator makes more sense but yes this is the way you can use uh, operators in your bicep and the same way what we have done is now we have this environment in production and then for a production it is doing premium lrs and then for non-production it, it will be doing standard lrs and uh, what we will do is we will have to use this environment name now in the main because here you can see the module is throwing error and saying you know uh, missing property name environment name and in that case what we will do is environment name 
and say production so you know uh, or we can say developed so it, it accepts development production staging we are doing development so we have development and for that reason uh, the module will deploy a development uh, specific SKU which will not be premium LRS which will be standard LRS so this is the way you can define your uh, uh, values uh, let me just go ahead and quickly check how does it look easy uh, we are in D9 and D9 what if deployment subs so let me zoom it a bit yeah so easy deployments of what if template file main bicep uh, and uh, we have everything there uh, let's see uh, we don't have uh, let's see. so if you will check it will go ahead and figure out if i have selected everything correctly maybe some api version or something is not correct then it will throw another but it's checking and it will tell us what's going to happen so okay so it's saying invalid api version and this is the one which is invalid the valid version is somehow looks like bicep has some problem bicep vs code extension has some problem because it's not showing that api here for that reason we will just copy paste and here it's saying you know error so it's it's a, it's, a, it's a issue with azure bicep vs code maybe i have i need to check but for now it's enough to run this yeah so this warning does not seem to be the right warning because when we did use one of the api which is being uh, populated by the vs code it's it's a throwing error so that means something is wrong there but anyway we can see that we are getting a resource group created and we are getting a storage account created and a storage account will be created using standard LRS because the environment name is development and for environment name development this has to be selected now suppose if we change it to production so if we change it to production in the main bicep let's see and save it and then run the command again let's see what will happen so for that case production should be selected then it has to be stand premium lrs instead of standard lrs but we'll see that yep so you can see that it is deploying to premium lrs now the uh, coming back to this so we have already covered uh, let me go back so we have covered comparison operator we have covered um, you know now let's go ahead and cover the logical operator so logical operators are let me go back and uh, yeah vs code now logical operator let me open the website and here we'll go to the logical operator now in the logical operator you have these just like any other language you have these many logical operator and or uh, you know these things now in our case let's go to the code and just do this so in our case now suppose we don't just want to have the premium lrs for production but we also want to have premium lrs for staging as well uh just the development should have lrs uh, like standard lrs otherwise it has to be premium so in that case what we can do is we can use a logical operator or logical operator uh, which says this and there we say my name is equals to and we'll say 
staging. So if we have staging or production, then it has to be premium LRS. Otherwise, it has to be standard LRS. So that way, we are using a logical operator uh, or logical operator. Similarly, we can even use AND operator. But AND doesn't make sense here because you can't have two values for the same parameter environment name. So, you know, it doesn't make sense. But just in case you have two parameters for so for example you have a storage account environment name or maybe you have another parameter just for a example um, you call it app name maybe the app that is being that is using it now for app you know it is not secure Loud. and i would say Uh, you can say DS app or I can say DS app too. Yeah, just an example. So we have a app name parameter, and for DS app, if it is DS app and environment is uh, production then I want to have premium LRS so similar thing like I can say and and I say that if app name is DS app and name is app then it has to be premium LRS otherwise standard LRS so you know it is all depends on what logic you want to have so uh, this is right now it's just uh, doesn't make sense at this moment but you can have it right now we'll just get rid of this we will just make use of or statement which is more uh, logical at this moment so but yes i mean you have different operators and or not you know all those you see we have like and or not coalesce operator conditional expression we are already using conditional expression here so if you look at it uh, yeah so we are already using conditional expression if you see so it is a kind of a if else statement if this is true oops if this part is true then this is the value otherwise this is the value so this is the conditional expression you can you can think of it like if else statement without if and else is kind of scenario it is just if or else that's it uh, okay so this is the way you can use uh, uh, logical operators and if we we'll do this now again so let's do this let's name this staging here and if we go here yeah then what we'll have is let's go back run this again and in this case we will again have premium lrs because either production or you know staging both should have premium lrs but we'll see that oops what's happening valid is not supported version or okay something one eight twenty four the supported version R preview let's use this one yeah Some issue run it. The, the request to predict template uh, invalid API version is invalid. The supported version is 16.24. See some issue with the API version of resource group, but we will debug it later. 
right now our premium uh, primary objective is to understand how these operators how these param uh, uh, kind of uh, operators logical operators works or how these different uh, ways of using the functions so as you can see for staging as well it's creating a premium lrs so the or operator is making it to do it otherwise if you will remove it so just an example if you'll just keep it production so even for staging it has to be standard lrs so if you'll do this again Just wait for a while. Yep. So as you can see now again the same thing standard LRS now because we don't have the OR condition anymore. So this is the control Z. Okay. So this is the way you can use these conditional operators or you can use the the functions for example resource group dot location. Or you can use the the scope for defining the the module scope. Uh, 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 you know, as when you deploy resources, for example, on the subscription scope, resource group is allowed. But to deploy a module which deploys resources, you need a scope of a resource group because resources are deployed in a resource group, not on the subscription level. But again, if you are deploying something that is deployed on the subscription level, for example, policies that's the case where you need to use the scope for subscription this is how you can do it and now the next thing is that uh, another one is accessor i think is left yes accessor so accessor are like you know we have already used it but it's just that we have not you uh, named it so for example we have like my storage dot name which is accessing the property so you can access the property of an object parameter or an object variable or an object that is coming out of a resource creation. The you know you can use it and then further you have this output here and then in the main bicep, what you can do is in the main deployment itself you can deploy a name and I can say outputs dot storage account name. So I can get the output of the storage account name. So this is the you know one of the very basic use but again when you deploy resources you want to know what is the sometimes you want to connect these resources for example here you are creating a storage account now further down the line you are creating a another resource like uh, you know some some uh, maybe some applications which you need to use this storage account or which needs to do uh, like function app you need to integrate that this is storage account with that function app for doing some story uh, for, for for using it as a, as a storage so those uh, those places you might need to know some of the values from the storage account for example storage account name storage account keys so and so stuff and that you can access using this so this is the thing that I wanted to discuss today and I think we are done for this and just yeah so you know uh, now we will again connect uh, for the next session where I will discuss about Azure bicep another core topic uh, the primary objective of these quick start uh, you know videos is that you should be you should be able to get started with these concept with your bicep development and then of course uh, it's uh, as I said it's not that, that that we just covered all the operators or similarly all the comparison operators or all the functions for for example we have not covered everything but what we wanted to discuss is that bare minimum to start with and to get the real time example so that when you start to work with them when when you have example of equal operator you can easily start making use of other operators similarly when you can you start using one of the functions then it you know slowly you can you can make sense out of it which function you will need you know sometime when you are kind of doing some stuff related to that so for example you have a lot of string functions as you can see we don't really use all of them but we can use this unique string thing that we have already discussed 
so you can define a unique string base string where we have defined the base string as a uh, subscription id so that it will use that subscription id base to create a unique string something like that so this is the thing that we wanted to discuss uh, thanks for watching yeah let's connect again